Thank you for taking advantage of the program. We're really excited to give away a Handyman for Heroes every week. And so please remember to nominate by next uh, tomorrow night, actually Friday, the May 29th at 5 p.m. And we will make the announcement over the weekend. So now we're going to carry on with the first portion of today's uh, workshop. We are going to, Ryan is going to demonstrate how we are going to build this pet feeding, pet feeding station. I'm sorry, that's not what it is. It's a pet feeding station. It can be a pet I'm sorry, a pet feeding station would be really fun too. I don't know what that is, but you know what? It's going up on a hashtag, I think, right now. It's going to be up there. It's going to be trending, think, folks. I don't think the dog would know the difference. You're right, actually. I bet they wouldn't. All right, so we're going to carry on, and I'm going to stop blabbering. So Ryan's the expert. He's going to show us. We're demonstrating how to do this with whatever tools you have. Actually, why don't we talk about the tools and uh, what we might need for this? So today, okay. I guess, we're just we're mo mostly focusing on the jigsaw. Okay. Which is, you know, about a $200 tool okay. um, that you can buy, and it's useful for um, a, a variety of things, and I'll demonstrate that today as we're working. Okay. But um, so, but I'll talk about some safety as we start working on that. Well, the project that we're working on is a dog feeding station, and we're demonstrating with pot lid <laughs> because the dog ran off with the bowl. So that's what happens when you, you know. He was a hungry puppy. You got a hungry dog. Right? Hungry puppy. But essentially, this is the larger station for the 60 to 80 pound dogs. Ah, right? okay. So, but we're, but uh, what we're going to do is the bigger bowl would fit, and we're going to make another one after this, but this is where the bowl would fit down like that. Okay. We've already pre assembled kind of the main stand, and, and, right. and uh, we've broadcasted the instructions. Yes, everybody we have. That's yep. interested. Mm -hmm. So this has all been pre assembled because we've been practicing these types of cuts, and everybody's yep. experts in making boxes now. And so this is essentially what it's going to look like, and I want to demonstrate how we cut out a circle. So, okay, fantastic. So first thing to cut out a circle is you don't just start cutting, right? You got to make a circle. So a lot of times you can pick up a tape roller or whatever or a pot lid and get your pot circle. Lid. Yep. But in the uh, for this particular project, what we want to do is if we were marking the dog bowl because we want to have the dog bowl with us before we mark it out, we would make a mark around the outside of the lid. But what that does is it doesn't allow the dog bowl to sit down. In the hole, right? Okay. So, right. so there's different ways to do it. We would either find a shape that's slightly smaller, okay. or we could we would make our mark around the perimeter. Yeah. And then we would go ahead and you know measure delta on the inside. But again, I think like all the things we talk about, we want to slow down and not rush these types of things. Right. You know, because because you got to think through it, and if you start panicking and freaking out, you make mistakes. You always have been saying since the beginning, measure twice. Once. Well, that's a old be patient. You know? I right. think pay attention. You know, pay, pay attention, attention to what you're building. Okay. You know? And and slow down and kind of think through the process sure. before you start working on it. Okay. And so, anyways, like I said, so for this for this particular, we're going to demonstrate with the pot lid here because because here's our outer circumference. It conveniently has an inner cir circumference, yeah. so we can stick it on there and mark. Okay. I think this is a big message I keep trying to say is a lot of this stuff isn't cut and dry. A lot of it is right. is taking the time to be in the shop or in the garage and using the tools and getting picking up small projects like we're demonstrating and you know having some courage to try something do you want to flip that up and show the yeah. camera okay not to interrupt you no it's okay i'm not saying anything too sophisticated is so, that so yeah. we got this guy right here okay there's a small we'll oh, cut up that base. circle right there and then we'll cut out that circle right great there. So. cool now like i said carpentry carpentry isn't it takes time. You got to practice. It's a, it's a practice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, don't have high expectations for yourself. I was working with a friend of mine that's 25, and he's uh, you know, I was trying to convince him to come be a carpenter. And yeah. He's, he's so stressed out that he uh, he's not doing it as fast as me. And I said, 20 years, dude. 20 years I've been doing carpentry. How can you keep up with it? It takes um, time. It takes practice. And you're gonna mess stuff up. I'm going to interrupt really quickly. I yeah. forgot to remind our audience that we are doing our uh, our usual giveaway of the from Bro Vineyards. We have the two bottles of wine and the two goblets. So um, if you have pre-registered, you are in the running for the raffle prize of that. And again, Bro Vineyards, thank you for, their, for being our sponsor. Don't be impatient. We talk about patience. And of course, you can do curbside pickup or have your wine delivered if you win. We will, of course, be in touch with that information offline. Are we getting one? I don't know. But every time I say question? um, it's going. You have to have a sip of wine if oh. you're watching. This time, so. <laughs> um, I hope that you're all enjoying yourselves so far. Because so, I'm sure uh, that I've said um a million times already. Um, what we're working on today? <laughs> We've not had anything. Um, yeah. So okay. Back so to here where we, we were. The circles have been. The circles have been drawn. The circles have okay. been drawn. And right. so since I'm using this jigsaw tool. Yes, which I will now put on my safety goggles. Please. Which everyone at home, please remember safety first. Yep. Yep. And so the jigsaw yeah. is a reciprocating tool. Okay, okay. There's, there's multiple types. The sawzall is another type of reciprocating tool. What that means is the blade 
the blade goes back and forth inside the chamber of the tool. Versus a circular saw where the blade's spinning. Right? Okay. And so the mechanics of the tool kind of dictate the safety methodology okay. you use to use it, right? All right? So since this one's here, I can't just start. The blade's not going to submerge into the wood. So what I got to do is essentially just a little another pre-drill. Okay. But I wanted to find a, a bit that's the right size of my jigsaw blade. Okay. And so... Now, the truth is, for anybody who's just learning woodwork, the jigsaw probably isn't going to be that I would okay. recommend you to go buy. Okay. But I will talk about another tool that I do recommend. Okay. So I made my little hole right there, and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay. Is it easier having this raised so it's a little closer to use? Yes, because okay. in this, in this, like in any cut, you got to right. understand okay. where the where the blade is on the other side of the piece of wood. Okay. Right. And so with my circular saw, I'm. I'm cutting across the grain, and the, and the board's going to fall. It's going to fall into the cut. Right. So that's why I like to okay. move, you know, move it off and have the cut fall away. In this case, my blade is going going down, down. and it's underneath. Again, okay. we're not going to have our hand under there. All right. But I also don't want to have, you know, I'm not trying to cut down here on this tabletop. Right. right. You know, and I'm okay. just kind of keeping no, no, no. so you can see. Yeah. You know? So then it just slips on down in there, ready to roll. Okay. And <clears throat> a lot of times, um, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to like have the blade running. When you stick it down in there. Okay. Like most cuts, you want to have the blade safely okay. near, near the cut and not on and turn it off. And it's a pretty straightforward cut. You just So it kind of gets jammed up in there, and as I'm kind of working it out, I don't want to turn it back on because it's going to pop around. You know? But I do, but I do want people to, to yeah. get out there and use tools. Yes, yeah. because there's a lot of stuff that can be built. And the only reason I'm switched that back down is because I kind of want to show you sure. that you can move you can move your board around as you're cutting on this type of a cut, right? Because like on the circular saw cut, it's a, it's a straight cut. We want to let it fall. On this one, we have a little bit more okay. flexibility, you know. Yeah. So I can turn my board around this way. All right. You ever seen the old houses in DC or Richmond and maybe Arlington too that have the old porch work, the scroll work? Yeah. The jigsaw is a perfect tool to do a lot of different types of decorative things, right? Okay. So you can draw you can draw a little chicken head like we did for our chicken bun years oh. ago, you know? And and cut out a little shape or whatever, you know, a heart or anything. But so it's a versatile tool for decorative woodworking. You know? Okay. So that's what that. So if you are interested in more types of projects that kind of are prettier, I better. was going to ask you what else yeah. you use a no. jigsaw. For. No, the scroll work is, is kind of the industry standard of what that okay. type of work is. And like I said, imagine that old Victorian porch, and and, you, and yeah. it's got all the pretty you know hearts cut into it and all that old stuff. Okay. You know, jigsaw is a perfect tool for those kind of. Okay. Things. Steady pressure. I mean, that's a perfect circle. I mean, much no. of mine would be awkward. only Michelangelo I ever drew a perfect well, circle. Well, okay, but I would have something like I could never draw a perfect circle just freehand. And right. I know we measured this, but I would feel that I would. How much pressure? It Let me demonstrate that. Let me demonstrate. That's a great question. Excellent. So let's just test that our our dog Glad hole slash hot lid yeah. that's in our hole. So I okay. so that one I could have cut a little bit wider. Okay. But we had previously drawn two circles, so I was confused about which circle was. Right. Let's turn it over. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm gonna just draw again. I'm gonna draw okay. a little bit darker. Okay. Of a line. And, I, and to, to what Jim was saying, I kind of just cut that circle right around because that was like the second or third time I've used a jigsaw. So on the first <laughs> time you use it, you want to give yourself a little room, you know? Like if I cut it, it would be a weird oval. But I think shape. this is for this type of uh, project. Okay. We can, you know, we can take our time with our cut, right? Because this piece of scrap wood isn't something that's important to us. Can I draw a face on this yeah. then? Yeah. Okay. Here. Someone draw a smiley face for me. Sorry. Okay. I drew a face on this one. I know. So to Jen, to what Jen's saying is, I'm going around. I can stop, and I can always kind of work my cut back to the inside of the scrap. Wood, okay. Right. So like, I don't have to. What I don't want to do is cut too far outside. Sure. So if I mess up. 
can cut all that on the inside and it doesn't, and it doesn't matter okay. because it's, it's the waste. Okay. And so that's why I think, you know, you just kind of, but again, it still is kind of more efficient just to, just to follow the line around the cut. Sure. You know? Okay. Now, if you go to the store and buy jigsaw blades, some of them are wider and some of them are narrow. Okay. But I wouldn't think too much about it. You know, okay. If you're going to the store and you're ready to buy a jigsaw, you know, buy a mixed pack of different types of blades. Okay. Now I'm going to focus on how the wood is moving and how you're moving it in relation to how you're moving the jigsaw. I'm just curious. I'm going to watch more carefully. Okay. okay. Right. That's right. why I'm not used to stop. So now you'll move the wood. Yeah, and I can come okay. back come back to this more comfortable okay. position. That's what I was yeah. But here, like this line right here, I kind of came off the line sure. a little bit. Okay. So, I, so I can go back around and let the tree. You know, like I'm cutting right in my hand right here, but a tool like this isn't gonna like speed yeah. up. You know, it's but I do want it. That's why I'm trying to move around to kind of. It's like a winter candy in here with this pine flying around. Uh, pine's pine's a real good building material. It's cheap. It doesn't warp too badly. not really dense which is a variable right so right. If, we, if we're working with maple like we were setting cabinets today and we're screwing the cabinets together made out of maple it's burning all our bits up because it's really dense you know? sure it pines a lot um it's actually it's actually called a soft wood that's what it's called but i would assume that though for cabinetry you want something of course more sturdy yes certainly like a lot of right. face frames on your painting <laughs> made out of maple because it's one of the harder wood it's right. going to take a dent when you you know you take get, a punch when you get mad and try to like don't do that. Put your spoon in your drawer. Sure. Right. Ooh, so excited. That one looks like a piece of art there. Kind of we show that up how you did your little. Uh, well, that's actually. Little, you're, actually, that's kind of cool. It does look like a <laughs> It looks like a side. profile, doesn't it? Yeah. So, like, again, that's kind of. That'll a, be for sale. A random, yeah, this on is Ryan's a right. This is a, we'll a post Ryan that. Pettit. We're going to put that original, an original uh, wood cut. But that's the scroll work, right? And that kind of you like what I was that's talking cool. about. Oh, you can have that one. Aww. Two. So then, like we always talk about pre-drilling and assembly and the screws. I'm just going to do this real quick. Okay. So this bit today I brought, I think I mentioned it before. So, oh, go ahead. question, not to yeah. interrupt you. Um, before we put the dog bowls in here, should these be sanded down or? Well, I think, um, now another application, let's say you wanted to build your vanity for your bathroom. Like oh, I, built my, I, mom, totally I built my mom a walnut this. vanity and yeah. I dropped a sink in it, right? So she had a walnut top okay. and, I put a, and I put a sink. So like that's yeah. a, as an application, yeah. so but cool. if it's visible, you right. might want to finish it. But if it's not now, the the dog water, right? right. It's going to splash everywhere. Yeah. And so if you're making this project, you might go ahead and take your polyurethane or your sealer and seal up around it because you don't want the water to get in there. Right. It's just like my mom's vanity, I sealed yeah. it all up. So that was kind of part of the finishing work. Right. But this pot lid fits perfectly on there, and so we might be able to cook something. I was going to say you could just put out a little. Uh, or you just put a little a bit burner, of burner, like yeah. if you've got a fondue pot yeah. perhaps, yeah. and just really go for it. But it's all about imagination too. Yeah. And I think I think that's a really that's a really good kind of thing to remind everybody about woodworking is that your yeah. ma your imagination is your is the limit, you know. And uh, there's these beautiful websites called Pinterest. Have anybody ever seen that? It's got one for twice. Got a million yeah. and a half ideas on it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. We're, there are yeah we we did some research for the pick, picking the um, options for today. And definitely trying to pick things that are relatively straightforward for the DIY person at home, right? I mean, I, my son could probably, you know, at this point, yeah. have some fun with it. No, right? he actually is ready to come. Exciting. I had our handy session last week, and my son came and mastered the art of uh, the handsaw. So. And he's still working hard at it. And then that night was sawing at 11 p.m. So thank you, Ryan. You're welcome. The gift of that saw. You're welcome. Happy to help. Yeah. Mm hmm in the kitchen. Yes, it was great. So this is a pre. So when we talk about pre-drilling, this bit actually has what's called a countersink on it. Okay. So if you want your your screw to be exposed, um, it, it sets the screw head down into the wood. So that's another type of bit you could buy. Okay. With a, it's called a countersink. Okay. And so I'm only going to screw one of these screws in just to show you. Sure. I don't even know if I'm going to start drive. Anyways, we're going to work on the other project and I'll screw, screw okay. this okay. together. So again, this one is with a larger 
pet feeding station, not the pet feeding station, as I like to call it there yes. at the beginning. It's the pet this, feeding station. This is the pet the, feeding station. The pet feeding station for dogs. larger dogs. This is for the 60 to 80 pound dog. Um, I don't think we talked about the benefits of a raised, I mean, pet feeding station. Well, the one we're showing on this one is you could actually like yeah. have a little basket below with maybe their to yeah. mm -hmm. toys or things like that. Also, yeah. and again, you know, this is this could be a thousand things. It could keep be, the mess away. Yeah, yeah, it could be a dog feeding station, or it could be, you know, it could be a, a you know, you can put your trophies in there. You know? If you turn it on the side, you can make it into a cat climbing tower. Yeah. Like Carpeted actually. Cat climbing tower. Cats would totally go through that. Well, you put it on the side. Yeah, they yeah, would that'd be great. go right in it. Gotta climb around. Like yeah. a little hobbit door. Yeah, oh. Or a hobbit door. All right, so. so yes, we so are this not. This is the go. demonstration of our, yes. pet, our pet feeding. Yes. If we were on TikTok, I would uh, just swipe like this, I think. Oh, I say this. I actually don't know how to use it because I'm. But if we swipe back, it would be complete and there would be a dog in front of it. But yeah. Since I am not knowledgeable. Okay, so we are now demonstrating. Number two. Well, we're just having fun. Or we're just having fun. Okay. What kind of wood is this? Are you from pine again? This is poplar. Poplar. So it's similar. It is actually a hardwood. Okay. Um, and it's similar uh, to pine. That it is one of the softest hardwoods. And um, it's, so, so at Home Depot, you can trying. you can buy oak okay. on the shelf. You can buy poplar. You can buy pine. Yes. So all of your all of your wood um, products, are pretty much the three woods that you would buy. Okay. And and poplar and pine are softer, and oak's a lot harder. And and honestly, for any purposes at home, you would need it for would be the finish color. You know, okay. your, your oak's going to stain a certain way. Pop, oh. Poplar doesn't take a stain very well, okay. but it also it's is very, the way it's it is. very stable. Yeah. It's very stable. And that's what makes it, these two by twos will stay like this and not, not bend up and warp. Okay. You know, so if you need something like this project we're about to demonstrate, which is kind of a cat feeding station or a small dog, 15 to 25 pounds. Um, Thank you for the clarification. You're welcome. Um, it, you know, this, uh, this is a perfect wood for what we're showing because, um, okay. because it's going to be really stable yeah. and it's not going to move around. Now the okay. pine, the pine is going to move and have a little yeah. more character. It's because it grows faster from a pet. Do you want to briefly touch on using the sawhorses today for cutting? Um, or for, is there any reason why we're doing that instead of? Uh, well, it's because what we would usually use in the field, and I'm just okay. usually too lazy great. to bring them in. No, 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 I'm just great. But okay. no, certainly a set of sawhorses. This okay. was this was. Um, if you don't have a sawhorse. If you don't have a set of sawhorses, this is the set I recommend. And oh. it, the reason it is is because it tucks away real nice. The legs okay. fold in. You know, sawhorses can get big and clunky, and it's only about okay. thirty-five dollars a set. You know, and okay. so you can store them really good. Plus, they got metal on them, and they're, they're a little okay. bit more sturdy. What if you don't want to buy a sawhorse? Then you need to work at a kitchen table. Oh my gosh! Um, All right, you can come repair my kitchen table. <laughs> it won't make me new one, right? Out of oak or poplar. You probably could um, actually. I'll go home with something at the table. So. Um, All right. No, if okay. you if you don't have sawhorses, right? Um, I think that's a you you. You do need a station to work okay. to do woodworking. Okay. I mean, and I do actually work on the ground a lot. So, yeah. so it's as much as me just being on my knees and setting up a couple of boards on the ground okay. and making sure that I'm not cutting into the concrete or the grass right. or the hardwood in the kitchen. Okay. And um, and so, so you definitely you can work on the ground, but again, you're kind of creating a makeshift bench. You know? Okay. But they, but a lot of people will have a bench in their garage, you know, and, and sure. it certainly be a cool project to kind of show somebody how to make go. a garage workbench. Oh well, right? we will make a note of that. So all right. So how do we carry on? So yes, this one we're, we want to talk a little bit more openly about kind of coming up with it, coming up with a design, oh, right? Set your pencil. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And so so this was kind of a pre pre planned project, and this one we're kind of we're kind of sure. we also referenced off Pinterest Street. Right? Yes. But um, we want to put three bowls in, even though we only bought two. Okay. And um. And so we're going to go through the process of starting from scratch. How do, how do I figure out this project? Okay. And and I, you know, if I was out there by myself building this, these cat stations, I yeah. kind of I would want to understand what my you know I have my, my length and my width, right? Okay. And I have these pieces are all thirty six inches or thirty two okay. inches. So so we, you have to be creative enough to understand the myths and the math and the wood. You know, okay. Carpentry is all about math, but you can't be stressed out about it. Right. So, so what I want to kind of understand first is the width of the bowl because I want this bowl to be supported by my two long pieces like that. All right. And so right here I can kind of measure about five and a half inches. All right. And if I did five and three quarters, it fits a little bit better in it, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm gonna go with five and three quarter inch that dimension. Right? Okay. And so if I and then then my bowl is this way, I'm gonna probably need. So we got this piece. You know, you can do all kinds of stuff to kind of figure it out. You got to start sure. mapping it out in your head. Yeah. So right here, I know I've got okay. about nine inches that I okay. need for each bowl, right. piece, piece to piece, right? Okay. And so we can start with that. So okay. piece to piece, nine inches, and we're going to lay it out. All right. And 
And if we didn't want something this length, maybe just two small bowls. Well, let's just do two. Oh, well. That's okay. All right. Because that's what we got. Let's just Great. go to two bowl pieces. Okay. Let's just do that. So what I'm doing is I'm doing my nine inches. Okay. And there's your, your hashes instead of your dots, right. yeah. which we learned about. And my square. And your square. And so I'm kind of laying One out One of these days I might actually do something, but I'm still just observing and talking. Keeping everybody interested. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> so much as amused. Let's just put it that way. But again, I think we're slowing down again to kind of double okay. check. Double sure. check that what we're building is what we want. So, like I said, the nine there, okay. but I want my five and a half inch set. So again, okay. here, here I'm stumbling through the thinking of it, okay. but, I, but I think that's not abnormal, right? No. Because right. I want to, because we say measure twice, cut once, but it's really no the abnormal. And like, and, and sometimes it takes a little time to figure it out. And you kind of, kind of work through it as you're looking at all your pieces and parts. Looks like a tic-tac-toe set. Yeah, totally. Does. So what not I'm not foreshadowing to next month, but so what I'm regrouping. Next month. Is I'm going to go ahead and say this is my beginning, and okay. I know, and I know I've got five and a half inches for the for the bowl. So what okay. I'm going to lay out is five and a half inches this way off this board right here. And we know these are inch and a half, so five right. and five and a half plus inch and a half happens to be seven. Okay. And that thickness that then as you can see, I'm kind of laying my board on here and making marks. It's an, it is an intuitive process. I trust whatever you're doing is what is, is happening. But I'm not necessarily communicating it well. That's enough. okay. I'm just watching. Learning. Oh. Everything's okay. So what I've measured now, okay. we're going to build a two bowl cap okay. station. Right? Great. And I've measured, I've measured my cross pieces and okay. my inside dimension on it. All right. We're gonna get the old skill saw. Actually, okay. yeah, we'll just use the skill saw. Oh, this all right. Uh oh. Keep our goggles on. Keep your safety goggles on, everybody. And you can use the jigsaw for it too. All right. how fast and easy it goes, we stumble through it, you know? And I like that. Because I think somehow in our fast-paced American society, we want it all to come together because we snapped our fingers, you know? Sure. And I, I do think some of these old practices, not just carpentry, but sewing or cooking, any of the old stuff that everybody just had to do to survive, you know? I miss that cut -ups. I gotta redo it. So like it takes time, feeding you know? laundry on the rocks down the stream or <laughs> washing dishes and no, what about water washing clothes by hand, you know? Heat it up over a wood fire. I think I read Little House on the Prairie. I know what you're talking about. It's slow down. We gotta slow down as a as a humane being. Oh, can we keep the dishwashers? No. Nope. They're no. all going. That's not we're all going down. That's not fun. Well, we do have kind of a perspective sometimes that everything's supposed to be done quickly. Now, our remodeling projects always go quickly. We get in and out. Sure. Depending on the project. What I'm just kind of mapping out how this top is supposed to go. I'm going to take my pre-drill bit. Like I showed before. 
actually, when I was a client for Moss 10 years ago, and Moss did the kitchen in my old house, it was a quick project. And it was during the Snowmageddon. Even doing that was uh, right, right on schedule. So I really admire those guys for driving down the street in those vans in, the, in like four feet of snow, right? Yeah, man. That was the one that dumped on us twice, right? Yeah, it was a crazy, crazy winter. So here's my pre trip. Okay. I'm going to set this little black. So sometimes when you're kind of putting things together, you, you take both sides. Before it's all screwed together, you can use one side as like a support. Sure. We have a special guest here today, too. And when Ryan's finished demonstrating how to put this together, we're going to have a special guest come with us with her little stuff. So stay tuned for that. It's very exciting. Sorry, I had to just put that in It's all right. Today's kind of a slow day. Yeah, it's fine. And don't forget the wine, the Bro Vineyards. We have that coming up, too. In my house, that would be considered a, a toy or a weapon or yeah. a tool. It does look like a martial arts weapon. Yeah, it does. Like, bling it. Set down. Today is brought to you by the letter E. <laughs> Everybody can do woodworking. E. Or the letter M. Moms can also do woodworking. Moms are everybody. <laughs> well, I think we hit something. I did just watch one of those uh, crash courses the other day, and they had the Muppets on it. Oh. Yeah. So that was exciting. Kermit, oh. was, Kermit was out there. He didn't have a letter E, though. <laughs> but, he, but he did talk about singing the Green song, and they wouldn't let him do it because of copyright. So as you can see, everything's easy. We just throw it right together. Sure. No problem. I'd have to... Super easy. There's oh. the top to our cat bowl. Or the letter A. The letter A. <laughs> and she fits down there. Of course she didn't fit quite right, but here's a good thing. So I didn't do my measurement quite right, and I got I got a letter eight that doesn't support the cat bowl, all right? But I got this other tool called a jigsaw. Yeah. Blast this. But wait. But just wait. There's more. What are we gonna do now? So now I How can do take we take this better? Knowing your tools and knowing the things you got available, it helps get right. the job done, you know, but you can't paint it, you know. Yeah. So are we going to put legs on this? Or yeah. are we? Oh, okay. Well, how are we doing on time? we got a couple I'm more minutes. Sure. I'm sure. I want to show one quick more thing. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to build the legs because we've already got all this okay. stuff built, but I want to show you this thing called a half lap. So okay. if, I, if I was like really building this thing for real and, sure. and wanted to kind of make it nice, instead of using my screws, I could do what a traditional woodworking joint called a half lap. I could oh, do it really I'm sorry, quick. a half? It's called a half lap. Yep. Half lap. Yeah, and I'm going to show you real quick because I, I was excited to kind of talk about this. Okay, I can go run a half a lap. Yes, you can. I'll be right back. So, a half lap, I'm right. going to cut this in half. Okay. Quick. Which, Actually, Which we tool? Just, we'll just use these scratchers. All right. So, if I was going to assemble that, I could use a traditional woodworking joint called a half lap. And what that means is we take, because glue, the letter L. glue doesn't glue the end grain. Because the, the grain of, you know, the tree grows like this, and the, the end grain isn't, doesn't, doesn't oh. take the glue. So, like on this, Little okay, eight, cool. this eight that we cut out. <laughs> if I if I glued this to that, it wouldn't hold. Okay. So the reason that we have to do certain types of joinery is to get yeah. the right grain to go to, okay. to to make a glue joint, right? So we could have totally made eight without using any screws, right? Okay. So what I do with the half lap is I'm going to mark 
two boards like this. Okay. And I can just use the thickness of the board to mark it. Okay. Everything doesn't have to be tapes and, and um, squares. You know? Sure. So this is an inch and a half. Okay. I'm going to do three quarters. Would you like to hand me that little rigid tool on the ground over there? It says right on the ground. I really thought you meant like, you know, like non flexible. <laughs> Would you hand me that non flexible tool on the ground? Sure, I'd love to. So, what I've drawn on this little piece right here is okay. one, one half of this joint that I've drawn. I'll draw the same thing on the other side. Okay. And the truth is, these are the kind of projects that are really cool. When we're starting to do real old school joinery, you know, if you look at your old grandma's, um, you know, vanity, or not vanity, but uh, dressers, okay. and you got all the beautiful dovetail joints in there and everything. Yes. Like, that's, that's the cool stuff. That's. Yeah. And the truth is, the old buildings used to be made out of these too. The barn that's on our property built in 1916. Yeah. There was no screws or nails holding that barn together, and it's still standing up because they use joinery like half laps to hold to hold the yeah. wood together. So I'm just demonstrating this quick sure. to show you that you could have built this eight with glue and not screws. Okay. But and hat, what is this? This is a we we call it a fest tool because that was the name the brand that came out with it first. Okay. But it's it's a little reciprocating tool, a multi tool, and it, and this is the tool I wanted to say. If you're going to go out there and buy a cutting tool, okay. this is the one you want to buy. Okay. Um, there's Dremel makes it, you know, and all the brands kind of have their offshoot right now. But what it does is it vibrates this way, and it gives you a lot of flexibility and type of cut. You can put okay. all kinds of different blades on the end. You can even put a little sanding and stuff on the end. Okay. You know, so it's kind of in your little Dremel tool set. And so I, I drew my. What I drew is put a half of each board because it's a half lap. So we're cutting the boards. Okay. Now we were working with it all day long. I don't have a fresh blade on it. And also. I'm doing it quick, quicker okay. than I would advise you to do it. If you were working from home, I'd advise you to take a clamp. If you have okay. a little clamp, a clamp right. the board of the board. Okay. Try not to. Try to. Almost. And what's cool because I went to cool I went to college at VCU and I would study crafts and woodworking. And our first yeah. project in, in school was half laps. Okay. I think this really is the neat stuff. So we cut out half of each one. Okay. I'm gonna show you how to do it with skill stuff. Alright, cool. Good thing we have a good power supply here. Yeah. Coming to you live from our Moss Design Center. Oh, okay. So this this way I'm just cutting it. Okay. And again, that's a very unsafe cut for everybody to make the way I'm making it. Because but I'm we'll just don't do don't necessarily try this at all. And I'll do one more cut with the jigsaw just right. so you can see the demonstration of all the different yeah. tools. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank kind you. of different ways that I'm using all the different tools to make the same cuts. Right, you know? right. Some seem a little bit um, faster than others. Maybe they're more powerful and, tools. And if you really are looking for your Zen experience, oh, absolutely. Go ahead and get your chisels and your um, chisels and your handsaw out and do this so, by hand. The jigsaw works a lot that's better. A lot faster. Oh, because my blade works. Oh, okay. So this is the half. Cool. And that's about as cool as it gets right there. So we could have made this whole eight with half laps all the way across. Right? We could have had an eight with all Well, this, that's an L. This is, a, this is an L, yeah. And so then what you do, you take your wood glue <laughs> and, uh, okay. and, and you glue your, your grain together. Cool. And clamp it up. Yeah. And then Look at that. an hour or two hours later, that thing's as strong as the wood itself. You know, so, so I really was cool. excited to talk yeah, about half laps. Thank you, half laps. Yeah. I thought you just wanted me to go take a half a lap. Right, well, so I mean, they're on the parking lot, sure, it's a little humid out. There is a convenience store about a half a lap away. Right. I'll be right back. So we need some of that yeah. wine. Yeah. 
So anyways, well, thank you, Ryan. It was awesome. That's there cool. you go. There's your eight. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ryan, for demonstrating those two pet feeding stations, not your pet feeding stations. Um, and now I'm really, really excited to introduce our special guest. Um, this is um, Isaac, my friend, and a Moss customer. Uh, her name is Victoria West, and she's brought her pup. And I, I'm going to come over there to you. Or we're joining each other. Follow me. That's this way. <laughs> Hello, Victoria. I'm just going to do the oh, COVID. I know. Bow. I know. Sorry. Um, and let's introduce your Victoria again. Now I just had her beautiful kitchen remodeled by Moss. Oh, you know what? I don't Love have to it. wear these anymore. Here we go. <laughs> Actually, at the end of this, please stay tuned. We're going to show you a quick video of the remodeled kitchen. We're so excited. Thank you again for allowing us into your home. Oh, no. And then I'm Victoria is also a dog trainer and boards dogs at her home and does socialization. And this is the cute puppy. You'll see him again in our video, the video. He's eight and a half. He's eight and a half. And <laughs> what, the, remind me his name. Knubel. Knubel. We love hockey, so we oh, name our dogs after hockey. Awesome, so, awesome. awesome. Knubel. So a few things that I asked Victoria to come and talk to us about, and she was gracious enough to join us. Um, since we're doing the pet feeding stations, was a few things we had talked about briefly. So if you could touch, I will prompt you with what you're talking about, sure. and we can talk about them. Sure. Um, sure. One thing we talked about, let's start with socialization. How early a, from an age should a dog, a puppy be socialized? Okay. What are your opinions on that? I, I would just say by eight to 10 weeks, okay. they should get out. Yeah. But after they have their shots, of course, okay. then you want them, after they see the vet and then they could get out, then they could come to like social socialization, um, like a little um, play group, which okay. is good. Aww. But get them out to PetSmart, just walk them around everywhere, just to you know. Right. So how about with um, with dogs as well as humans? Oh yeah, yeah. humans okay. big time. Yeah, yeah. And, like, you have little, to get them out little, everywhere. All ages. Yes, okay. all ages. Okay. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah little yeah, people, yeah. big people, you name it. But get them out in the world. Right, right. Because then they're much better. Right, Knubel? <laughs> and I know that some people, you know, with dogs, they get a little nervous about it. Some dogs are maybe more aggressive in their friendliness. So how should you approach just keeping them kind of, on, you know, just keeping them safe and comfortable with, you know, what, how dogs treat each other? What's okay, well, story? well, I think if you walk them, okay, okay I'm going to go on that. Sure. Yeah. You know, dogs could just bump noses and okay. they said, oh, hi. That's not really socializing them. Okay. It's saying hi because okay. they may sniff or what have you. Sure. You could just and bring treats okay. and say it's okay. Let them bump noses, say hi, and move on. Okay. Okay. And then okay. they don't get really scared. You know, look at see. I'm, I'm feeding. Yeah, yeah. Feed, right that was now. I think yeah, that was that's the topic. We can one. segue right into that. Actually, one of the other topics was sit, sit. called feed the meter. You know, right. Talk right. About that. And and what you can do, oh. canoeble sit down, 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 sit. Down. I was hoping the noises weren't upset. It's okay. okay. Stay. Stay. And what I mean by feeding the okay. meter is stay. You no, know, so he knows. Yeah. Canoeble, stay. You know, and then yeah. you could back up a little bit. Okay. And then if you want to come back in, you know, just to feed it, to show him, right. you know, I'm going to, yeah. you know, reinforce it. Stay. A good boy. Okay. Sit. A good oh, boy. Good Sit. Boy. Good boy. And, you know, do that even when they're sitting like that. Okay. Canoeble, stay. Stay. Okay, come, and then sit, and then you could keep feeding the meter here. Just right. show him, you know. Yeah, it's a good thing. Okay, right, good boy, good boy. When did you start training your dogs? Oh. From, from from as soon as you get them? Yes. Okay. Eight weeks old. Yeah. Believe it or not, and then yeah. yeah, and then that, like I said, you take them to the vet, you get all the shots, right. and then they'll right. say, okay, you could you know start socializing them. Right. And, Bring them to play groups like I have right. twice a week, and I think it's good. Mm -hmm. And then the dogs feel real comfortable. Yeah. But the more they come, repetition, right. the more they come, the better they get. Right. You yeah, know? absolutely. Which yeah. is a good thing. And he's right. really well served. May I pet you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just, good good pat. boy. Yeah. yeah, and you and should so definitely pat, say pat because owner. even right. kids too, right. make okay. sure mom and dad tells them no, ask ask first them. Yes, because okay. you don't know if they're socialized. <laughs> Right, exactly. Or what have yeah. you. But yeah, yeah. You can pet them. That good boy. He's See, he's, you know, he's really in the feed the meter. So yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah. going to oh. do is give you one. Oh, okay. Make him sit. Can I sit? Down. Go. Yep. Yeah. Down. Sit. Down. Oh, okay. Now. Okay. You can sit. Oh. You can get it on if you want. <laughs> Down. I have a dog, but I, that's okay. Not sit, very good. Sit. I should have had Victoria come and melt me out here. Sit, sit. Sit. Good boy. And, and, you know, just like I said, okay. he sees the treats. Yeah. So I probably should have given you oh, no. a few of them. Yeah. And then, whoops. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. Uh -oh. It's okay. 
You're eating too fast, and he's oh, excited. That's he's so okay. excited. <laughs> um, I think the other few things we had talk, talk, thought about talking about were both um, repetition and keywords, and those might kind of go together, like using the same words for training. And right, so right. Like, words like I said, the okay. repetition. Okay. You know, when you train them, sit, and like I said, stay, and always repetition, stay. And just sit, sit. Just keep, stay. Just keep doing this. Yeah, you know it's over and over, over, over and over. And over. Right. The more you do it, the yeah. better they get. Yeah. Right, and that's very imperative for a dog oh, because they so they really like to I know, I know to work their little brain because it's very healthy. Just like we like to work out, right. they like yeah. to listen and they like to please us. Yeah, which is a good thing. Good boy, and, and always tell them good boy. The positive reinforcement. Oh, all right. the time, okay. all the time, because that's very imperative too, right? Exactly. Canoeful, good boy, stay. And and then too, when they're doing that, you can walk around them. There's okay. so much you can do just right. to so right. they could hear yeah. that and get it in their little brain. Absolutely, good boy. Good boy. That's a good Aww. boy. Stay. Anything else we should touch on before we wrap up? Um, well, you know, just be consistent okay. about them going to the bathroom. You know, oh. morning. Oh. Uh, uh, stay. Like or you know, dinner time, right. eat dinner, what have you, and okay. just like when you feed them or whatnot. Okay. So. Yeah. That's all, you know, you have to kind of keep them rolling there. Oh, but, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. consistency is key, loving, re positive reinforcement. Oh, all the time. The meter, but you have now. to always remember that because right. some people don't. Right. They'll train their dog once. It's like, no, I'm done. Right. I'm trying to go back like five yeah. or six times. Really? But some people don't have time or what have you. Right. You know, maybe hire somebody mm -hmm. to help you or whatever. And yeah. here's a weird question. Yeah. Can, you tr can you teach old dogs new tricks? Can you I teach think, an older dog? I think, can you train an older dog? I think you can, but it's that it's that it's um, it's repetition. Dog, it's that word repetition. Right. Okay. And I I have done that you with have. dogs okay. that I get, and right. you know it's okay. But yeah. when you're calm, they're calm. You know, yeah. if they're yelling in the house or what have you, right. somebody is if somebody's upset, they right. know that. Yeah, they know that. Yeah. So you know, so when I'm when mommy's calm, <laughs> Nubel's calm. Aww. See. And he didn't mind the noise when you right. all were doing right. that. Yeah. And this is what I'm going to jump back to, okay. is when you get them out in the street and they hear mm -hmm. all these noises, right. they're not going to run from you. Or if you're in the car, they're not going to go under the mm -hmm. seat or what have you. You need to get them out there. Right. Because if yeah. you don't, they can get really scared. Well, you know, I have a dog and, with a lot of anxiety, so I can understand yes, that. Yes, but right. you have to. But you have oh, to. Fine. And it will come. You really have to work at it. Yeah. No, you know, it's, know. it's a process, but you know, they're, they'd be good doggies, but it's yeah. up to us right. to train them. There you go. Just like your kids. I know. You train your kids. <laughs> well, I do my best as much as I can every day, right? It's been a long time at home together, so it's been a long spring. As oh, yeah. Very yeah. Very yeah. Off, off. That's okay. Off. Stay. Well, thank That's you so much boy. for coming in, Victoria. No, and for I enjoyed it. Visit I enjoyed with it. Visit with us, then. and yes. thank you to Ryan for helping to put together yes. our pet feed, not pet feeding, our pet feeding stations. Oh. And, um, and I want to remind everybody once again about our Handyman for Heroes. Um, it's a weekly program we are running to give away a handyman for a day to essential workers in yes. the area. So we nominate, we ask our community to nominate someone before tomorrow night, Friday the 29th at 5 p.m. Okay. And uh, so please remember that. We showed you that video earlier on today. And uh, don't forget, if you pre-registered, we have our giveaway from Grove Vineyards. We are giving away a bottle of red and a bottle of white and some tumblers. And uh, it's been a fun afternoon. Thank you again for coming. Well, thank, thank you, Ryan. You. And we're going to we enjoy it. Thank you. Thanks for coming <laughs> to the offices. And again, we're going to close out today with a special treat, a, a replay of uh, the remodel of Victoria's Kitchen. So you can see not only did this sweet guy on the video and see the beautiful work that we did. Oh, I, know I that love, love it. it. I oh, love it. Oh, well, it's the best. You guys did it all. Oh, well, we're so grateful. It actually is Just, a fun surprise. I rock in it and I'm like, <laughs> wow. Well, it's a fun <laughs> surprise. Actually, Victoria's Project is being nominated as a project of the month for our company. So good, we're really excited good. to have you here today and to let you well, know that. Well, nice. it's exciting. Well, we're, oh. I want to come back. I'm just going to, you know, stop by sometime. I'm yeah. Gonna, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But thank you. We're going to have today's video. Thank you. See you soon. See you. Bye now. <laughs>
I love my new window. Pretty much, I mean, I get my kitchen in the morning and I just think, wow to me. And that's what I told mom that I wanted to, and they actually accomplished it. So I was too happy. <laughs> so cooking a lot, stay away from people and making sure everything's super clean and hope everybody stays with to the big world here. So far, they the design floor. They liked how I decorated the backsplash. Actually, they love my life. They actually like how I put everything together. I love the that gate for such an interview. Um, yeah, just everything, every little detail in here. I thought Nicholas Workshops was an awesome guy. He was a professional. He answered all questions. I thought everybody on the team was awesome. They were all very nice. They were kind of going in. I learned a lot when they were here. I met them at their office, so never had a problem. I thought they were all great personalities, and I think that really helped.